All right, I just want to give a quick update on the SEC tool and approach um, that I'm building. So like the goal is to extract uh, key parts of the financial data, but also um, material risks to shareholders uh, and generate like buy and sell signals as the 10Ks and 10Qs kind of drop. And I'm just doing some prompt engineering in Docky to extract um, data that will be used downstream by models. Uh, in this case, I want to extract um, the operate net cash provided by operating activities. So I went ahead and ran that prompt and uh, it extracted the correct value. I can check the work of the model using the citations here that are provided. I can jump into page 89 uh, and just double check that that number is indeed uh, correct. So 712, 183, uh, which is correct. Now that I have this, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and save it. And um, actually I need the prompt too. So let's go ahead and uh, grab that. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and enter the prompt. And this is gonna be um, description, volunteers, uh, net cash provided by operations in 2023. And I'll just go ahead and give it a name as well. And we're gonna go ahead and submit that. Once submitted, uh, where that winds up is in this tool I, I created called Stady. And um, Stady saves the, um, uh, the generated statements. And so you can see here is the one we just generated. And um, the idea here is that a team member could pick this up and then edit it if they want to. They can come in and um, change the data if they need to or otherwise alter the document just so a human has eyes on it and we make sure that we got good data quality here for anything downstream. Uh, next up, we're going to do the um, CapEx expenditures. All right, now that I got um, the cash flow statement, I'm going to go ahead and create uh, the CapEx for our, our um, DCF calculator. And so uh, what I've asked the model to do is, is use pages 89, 90, 91, 102, and 76, which I just grabbed by using the table of contents um, in the, the actual 10K. And um, I've explained to the model what capital expenditures are, right? So based on that, I should be able to extract everything. I've also asked for it to explain the result uh, once it outputs it. So we're going to go ahead and just run this query and see what kind of an answer we get. All right, so the model returned um, capital expenditures, and it's explained its reasoning. Um, so it's just saying that per the consolidated cash flow statement on um, page 89, CapEx for the year was 15.1 million. According to details provided on um, page 90, CapEx was 40 million. And uh, as noted on the same page, CapEx for the year 2021 was um, 12.16 million. So I'm just going to jump in there and real quickly um, take a look at what it found. And we're just going to go over to the page 89. And let's see. Oh, this is the wrong. Sorry. It looks like it, uh, it also grabbed the 2022 in addition to that. So we're just going to go over here to page 89. And I'm just going to look through here. And I do see um, property and equipment as 15, 15, 14. So that's reasonable. Um, this other thing that it's grabbing from uh, 2022 is irrelevant. Uh, so it looks like the only real CapEx was here. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that um, for, a down, for our downstream team who can then um, turn this into, and let me grab the prompt that I used, uh, who can turn this into inputs for our DCF calculator. So I'm going ahead and just put the prompt in there. Um, Palantir's uh, CapEx for 2023 extracted from the 2023 10K, right? And we'll just use the same name and we'll go ahead and submit that. And then we're gonna jump over to Stady. Uh, and again, Stady is the statement editor. Um, and that, that statement, these statements are used as the inputs for our DCF uh, model. So CapEx, here we go. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and edit this. Um, and I'm just gonna dump some of the information um, because I don't care about 2022. Um, so what I'm going to do is also dump these um, ex extra rows that dealt with 2022. And we've got those sources and, and all, all that, the rest of that looks good. I'm just going to give this a quick view and make sure it's, look, yep, that's all looks correct. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and save this. Uh, let's go ahead and submit that. 
All right, so now I've got something that um, my downstream model can use for um, CapEx. All right, so now that I have the required um, Stady documents uh, extracted, I'm just going to go ahead and use Desi to create a DCF. And it's going to be for Palantir. Um, I'm going to grab the um, CapEx ID uh, and just select my um, CapEx statement that I created earlier. We're going to go ahead and um, also grab the ID for net cash and insert that in there and um, select that one. So now we know we have valid steady statements. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just use 0 0.087 for the WAC and the 3% terminal growth rate. And what we're going to do is go ahead and hit submit. What that's doing in the background is it's calling my DCF agent. Um, my DCF agent will take in the parameters I just entered there. The first thing it'll do is locate the steady statements uh, required um, for the DCF calculator. Then it injects those into a prompt, uh, as you can see here. Uh, all the parameters, including the extracted uh, statement for the net cash generated from operations along with the capex. And then what it's going to do is it's going to use function calling to invoke my um, calculator, which is just a TypeScript function. Uh, it's well test, you know, you can build a unit test for these um, so that you know given the inputs, the outputs are right. So this is where you have a deterministic workflow. That's part of this non-deterministic workflow over here where the agent has to be responsible for um, extracting the inputs to the calculator. And with that, what you get is you get very repeatable results and very reliable results. And it's a neural symbolic, they call this like neural symbolic programming, where you use an LLM to get structured data to invoke um, an algorithm. And uh, there's a lot of benefits to doing this this way, uh, not the least of which is the level, the, the the fact you need way less training data, you get way better accuracy. And as you can see here, I've got my output of DCF. I could see that the model uh, correctly uh, inputted the net cash provided by operating activities. Um, and I can see the um, CapEx, which is also correct. And we can see the enterprise value, um, and then the, the present terminal value, and then the final terminal value. Um, so that's really cool, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep adding uh, agents that do particular types of modeling. Um, so like we can do things like generate buy and sell alerts, buy sell signals. Um, but what's also cool about this is I can see previous executions. So if I go into uh, the run history, I can see the one that I just generated here. And we can jump into that, and I can see all of the parameters that were fed in. I can see the objects that were retrieved. I can see um, the, fil the prompt that was generated and used um, to generate the DCF um, using the get enterprise value function. So I can see all the data injected there, that's great. I can also review the values the model passed to the calculator so that I know that it used the correct values. Uh, and then I can see the output that was generated and um, finally how it ended up calling my create DCF action, ontology action, which was uh, defined over here. So in Foundry you can create ontology actions that are, um, use your agents that you've created, or sorry, are used by your agents that you've created. Um, so it goes ahead and and, and uh, creates that DCF output for me, um, and then I see it here. And again we can open it up, and if we want to we can edit it, and we're off and running. Alright, so the real test here is repeatability too. Um, so you can see I just generated another uh, DCF um, and here's the, the one I just generated uh, we can see I get the same inputs right so I've got the same inputs for the net cash along with the um, capital expenditures and I should have the exact same uh, estimated terminal value um, let me go ahead and just let me just go ahead and grab this and then just go ahead and paste this into a scratch pad and um, let's go ahead and grab the uh, present and terminal values here. Let's just check that they are the same. So that looks correct. That also looks correct. All right, so that's the real test of any of these systems. And it's also the major benefit of a um, neural symbolic approach. It's, it's not, ju it's the fact it's repeatable. It requires less training data. data and it's much more explainable, right? It's like the fact that I can 
um, step back through executions and see, because I am using a neural symbolic approach, all of the steps that were taken and the inputs, again, to my calculator, the fact that I'm using the calculator, I know that once those inputs are generated, the output is guaranteed. Um, so just really cool to see like how repeatable this is and how reliable this is.